Father Chichester's uh, nephew inherited him. Uh, he was also called Arthur Chichester. And he got a new title. He became the first Earl of Donegal. And again, he saw the potential of Belfast. And for the next two or three hundred uh, years, the, the Chichester family basically ruled Belfast. And the Earls of Donegal became the Marquises of Donegal. And as a result, you've got the Donegal name all over Belfast, but they never actually lived there. They all lived in, uh, initially in Carrie Fergus and then Belfast. And as a result, you've got Donegal Square, Donegal Pass, Donegal Road, Donegal Park, Donegal Avenue, Donegal Quay, Donegal Park Avenue, Donegal... This goes on and on. And this is Donegal Square. And that building on the right there is uh, the City Hall. That opened to the public on the uh, 1st of August 1906. New City Hall for a new city. Belfast is a very young city by European standards. Beginning of the 19th century in 1800, the population of about 20,000, so it was a sizable town. But the, by the end of the 19th century, that town of 20,000 had become a city of 320,000. Uh, charter was granted by Queen Victoria in 1888, making Belfast a city. There was a reason for that rapid growth. Belfast experienced something that the rest of Ireland didn't experience to the same degree. That was the Industrial Revolution. Belfast City is a child of the Industrial Revolution. The City Hall was built by an architect called Alfred Brumwell Thomas from uh, North Surrey, that was called Virginia Water. He got a knighthood for his troubles. And Belfast City Hall actually has a replica. There was a, a South African architect was over here. His name was St Stanley Hudson back in the 1920s. He very much admired uh, Belfast City Hall and its uh, Baroque revivalist style. Made a few sketches and he went back to his hometown of Durban, Natal, Kwazulu, and he got the contract to build the Durban City Hall or Town Hall, as it was in those days. And uh, he built it as a uh, replica of Belfast City Hall. And you could Google that. But Belfast, as I say, it's a fairly young city. It's a Victorian city, basically. The name Belfast, well, that comes from the name of a river called the Farset River. And you're probably thinking, well, Belfast doesn't sound like Farset. But it's through the Irish for Belfast. The Irish for Belfast is Bilfirstow, which means the mouth of the far side. And Bilfirstow over the centuries simply uh, soft into Belfast. That building on the right, the right there, the red brick building, that was the old town hall. And actually we found City Hall from 1888 to 1906 when the present City Hall opened. And there in front of us would be the Albert Memorial Clock in memory of Prince Albert, von Saxe, Coburg and Goethe, Prince Consort and husband of Queen Victoria. It was erected in uh, 1869. And you can see it's leaning a little bit to the right as we look at it. That isn't your eyes, it is, eyes, it is actually leaning in a bit. And, it, and that started when it was erected in 1869 and it's been standing there ever since. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. It, uh, all of the stuff had to be very careful, be probably underpinned back in the 19th century because Belfast is effectively built uh, on uh, tidal mudflats and, uh, and when it was expanding so quickly they made a few mistakes and that was one of them but they got it underpinned properly and it's perfectly safe now. But to the left of the Albert Memorial Park is uh, High Street, that used to be Belfast Dock. No. That's where the ships used to tie up. And underneath High Street is a river called the Farset River. Being fierce stuff. The mouth of the Farset. And we are doing it right now. Past the Albert Memorial Clock. Down towards the River Lagan, which is the main river in Belfast. Divides uh, two counties to the way. The Lagan is effectively the border between County Antrim, where we are now, and County Down, where we're going. The building on our left, coming up, the Victorian building up, is the old customs house. 
built by a man called Sir Charles Lanyon, who was his, uh, actually from uh, Eastbourne in East Sussex. Come over here to uh, survey the, the construction of the Andrum Coast Road, A2. Still a very popular road. But he joined the architecture, uh, married a local girl, and spent the rest of his life here. Built stuff all over Ireland, but mainly in uh, the north here. Queen's uh, University's old college building, Customs House here, Belfast Castle, which isn't a castle by the way. It's called Belfast Castle because it's built in Scottish Baloney, Baronial Castle style. Now we just passed the big fish, you probably noticed it over there over your left shoulder. That's a commemoration of the uh, re-livening of the River Lagan. The River Lagan was a dead river for many years because of industrial pollution. Caused mainly by the linen mills of the Lagan Valley and the heavy industry of Belfast. But the linen mills have gone and the heavy industries all have gone as well. I mean, now I've got a healthy river. But we're heading down to the Odyssey, the entertainment complex, bars, clubs, restaurants, cinema screens, science, the W5 Science Centre, and of course the arena, which was the ice rink, home to Belfast Giants, Ireland's only professional ice hockey team. When they announced they were going to have an ice hockey team, people thought they must have gone crazy. But it has proved to be a resounding success and they've won the UK professional uh, league on several occasions. Now you have to confess all the players, they're from Canada. Irish Magansky, what would be the point? And they're a bit in sunlight, in the distance they're out the front, even though know, it doesn't deserve it, is Stormont. That's where the Northern Ireland Assembly is supposed to, to sit. But they haven't been doing very much recently. But they're still getting paid for their things. But we're turning left now onto what is traditionally known as Queen's Island. It's more popularly called the Titanic Quarter nowadays. But this is where Holland and Wolf is based. One of the biggest shipyards in the world at one time. The company responsible for the Titanic and our, her sister ships. A lot of people think the Titanic was a one-off, but she wasn't. She was one of three Olympic class liners. The first one to be launched in 1909 was the Olympic. It lasted right through until 1935. It was finally scrapped again for keeping. Scotland, just across uh, the Firth of Forth from, from Edinburgh, and uh, in Fife. The second one to be launched was the Titanic in 1910, when we not had it there. And the last one to be launched was the uh, Britannic, it was launched in 1914, immediately converted into a hospital ship that sadly hit a mine in the Aegean Sea in 1916 and was lost. To the left there, the Nomadic. That little ship was built as a tender for the Titanic in Sherbert in France. That little ship brought out the passengers from Sherbert to the Titanic back in 1912. Now we're just going through the lights. So that's the exhibition centre over there on the left. Can't let you off of that uh, lane to the left there. It's a live lane of traffic. And this red brick building, that's the old uh, design offices of Holland and Wolf. People uh, frequently ask, where was the Titanic actually built? Well, she was built over there on the left, where those iron poles are. That's to denote them um, where slipways two and three, the big slipways were. The old-fashioned way of uh, launching them off a slipway, they'd take them to a, a breathing dock to be on the superstructure. But that's where they were launched from over there. The three sister ships are all the same size, by the way. They're 182 feet long. 92 feet wide and 170 feet, 75 feet from the keels to the top of the funnels. That building we're just passing to Italian Studios, that was the industrial painting hall. No, a film studio. Game of Thrones, only in those things were filmed in there. Now we're turning left at a little ship that was built across the Mersey from Liverpool in Birkenhead called the HMS Carline. It was headquarters of the Royal Naval Reserve for many years. 
But its main claim to fame is that that little ship is the only ship still floating that fought in the battle.